Good morning everyone. How are you doing today? Let's hope the technical angels are on our side today. Um, and I'm really trying again with the landscape to see if it works. This time it didn't tell me to flip so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it will work because then we don't get those black lines down the side which is always a little bit better. I'm just going to hop on to the computer and see if I'm actually live. Fingers crossed. Um, and I think I'll give people a couple of minutes just to find me. If you're hopping on, uh, please do say good morning. It's always nice to talk to you. And hopefully the comments will come through really quickly, unlike yesterday. It was a little bit of a nightmare, wasn't it? Um, ah, ha, ha, I can see myself. Hooray! That makes a nice change. How are you all doing this morning? Good morning, Karen. Lovely to see you, kind of, um, as best we can. Um, so I hope you're doing really well. It's a bit sunnier here today in Bristol, so that's really good. Good morning, Jan. Lovely to see you. I've really loved seeing your eyes popping up um, on the feed yesterday. Please feel free to just put it a normal post up. Um, but don't forget the hashtag joy of drawing one for your eyes and then two for today and then obviously three for the next day. I hope you're all doing well. Your eyes have been absolutely brilliant. I've loved seeing them. All of the colours and the blending has been fantastic. Um, I really hope you're pleased with them and I hope that you are noticing a difference um, in your artwork already. Um, today... I'm just waiting for a few more people to hop on because um, it always doesn't go that, that easily, does it? Um, some of you might have noticed. Good morning, Elizabeth. How are you doing today? I hope you are well. Catherine, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, it's so lovely to see you. Oh, bit of a signal problem there. Fingers crossed, keeping everything crossed uh, for technical difficulties. Some of you might notice uh, that yesterday the link was playing up. It was meant to take you to the Joy of Drawing um, pipeline, it's called, in Kajabi. And because I had a countdown on it, because it got to naught yesterday, um, it directed you to another page. So it came up with the first page and then it flipped over to another page immediately. And I've just never seen that before. So I was on to technical support last night at 10 o'clock trying to sort that out. So fingers crossed, it should be okay. If you downloaded the PDF before yesterday, it would have been absolutely fine. It was just because the countdown got to zero that it had a bit of a funny five minutes. Um, that's kind of what I found out through technical support. So I know what to look for next time. Anyway, I thought Kajabi was starting to play up just like Facebook was yesterday. Um, but if you downloaded it before yesterday, it wouldn't have been an issue anyway. Good morning, Lillian. How are you? Oh, you're good. Thank you. That's really good. Catherine, day two. Let's go. Looking forward to using tech fur techniques for a pet portrait you're doing. Oh, good morning, Harry from Milton Keynes. How is it looking there this morning? Um, a little bit brighter, I hope. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Competition. If you want to be entered into the competition for a chance to win one month free in the Mindful Artist membership. Um, and that's first prize. And then second prize is a little package of goodies coming towards you. So this slice pen we're going to be demonstrating today. Uh, my favourite paper so far. And it's been my favourite for five years. And I think I can't imagine... Um, a time when I'm not going to be using this at some point. It's just brilliant. It's just a good all-rounder, good quality, not too expensive, really nice and thick, and it holds loads of layers, which is what we want for coloured pencils. And also my favourite pencil sharpener, the m &R. It's just brilliant. It always creates a beautiful, sharp point. So if you do want to be entered into the competition to win those fabulous prizes, um, then please like or love this video. Please comment on every video. Um, there's a post in my business page, Samantha Clift Art, if you head over to that and share it, because if you share something that's in this group, it just stays within the group, I think, or you might not even be able to share it. So if you head over to Samantha Clift Art um, and just share one of the workshop um, posts that I've done over the last couple of days, I really appreciate that. And also please do post your work that you've been doing. Hopefully you've been having a go with some of the techniques that we discussed yesterday. Um, 
it's always so much fun to be drawing with you, to have that interaction. It's a little bit lonely being an artist sometimes, sitting at home <laughs> at your desk on your own. So having these interactive workshops are lovely to get to know you a little bit better and to feel like we've got a community, um, which is kind of why I set this group up to begin with. So I hope you're really looking forward to diving into fur today. I wanted to just talk briefly about some of the accessories we're going to be using and then I'll be showing you how to use them. I know we touched on them yesterday. Um, and I know I probably show these a lot, but there's obviously going to be people that haven't seen them before and haven't heard of them. Or it's just not, not the right time for you to hear about them because sometimes you're so overwhelmed with everything else that if you just add something else into the mix, it just goes over your head. I understand that completely. Um, so these are the Tombow Mono Erasers. I would thoroughly recommend them. Um, you can get them really quite cheaply and then you can buy the refills. There's a couple of different sizes, like a square end. Can you see that? And there's a really tiny end. Fantastic for fur. We're going to be using these a little bit today. Um, so sometimes taking off pencil is just as important as putting on um, my trusty Derwent Electric. This is the second one I've had of this. The other one got smashed to pieces, unfortunately, um, by one of my little people. Uh, but again, they're not that expensive and it did last me a good few years. So I wasn't you know, too upset about that. Another thing that um, some people haven't heard of yet and I think it's just been a game changer for coloured pencil artists all around the world. I've seen it so often. It's the um, Slice Pen Cutter. Uh, there were quite a few different ones that came onto the market to begin with. Some that are a little bit cumbersome to hold. This is a nice slimline one and this one the blade stays up. Um, I would recommend getting one where the blade's, blade stays up because otherwise you've got to hold it and it automatically retracts back in. It's, it's just not easy to use. So um, I'm going to be demonstrating this today uh, again because a lot of people possibly aren't sure how to use this and, and get the best results from it. Um, another thing I really love and use all of the time is my Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. It's just amazing. Um, brilliant again for lifting off, great for texture if you're doing like fluffy fur or um, a shine on something like bot botanicals, like an apple we did in the last workshop. It's really good muted shine. So you're gonna be lifting off some of the pencil, but not all of it, and leaving a lovely natural dappled look. You can do that on um, a shine of fur as well. Ooh, sunlight's coming in now. Um, so it's a really good versatile eraser to use, and obviously you can knead it to any shape that you want. You can break a bit off, Please don't mistake this for blue tack. They are quite different. Blue tack's a lot lighter. And the main difference is that it's obviously for sticking. Uh, it's a little bit more sticky. And um, because it's more sticky, it's got that oily residue, which you don't want to leave on your work. So that doesn't have it. Although I would recommend changing it regularly. Otherwise, the oils on your hands will start to build up and you'll start to notice um, that you're leaving possibly a little bit of a residue. Good morning, Marilyn. Lovely to see you. Good morning, Ingrid. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, let me know if you've had a little go at your eyes yesterday. You've obviously got a bit of time to do it. Don't worry, I'm not saying that it needs to be done by the next workshop. Um, I'm going to give you, let me see, I think I'll give you until Monday, if that's okay, next week after the weekend. Um, and then I will be, you know, collating all of the competition entries. So we'll give you a, quite a few days uh, to have a go. But I really want you to have a go while it's fresh in your mind so that you can sometimes it goes in and it just fades over the few days. So while it's fresh in your mind, I would really encourage you to have a go and start putting pencil to paper, even if you're really nervous. Sometimes those first stages, just getting some pencil down, just some lines in is the best way to just get started. Just um, taking that first step is really crucial. Hopefully people are finding me now. Yes, I am. Were there any questions from yesterday to do with the eye before we move on to the fur? Please do let me know if you found anything difficult or if it didn't work out the way you wanted it to, then please do let me know and I'll try and help as much. Oh, comments are coming through on my phone now. That's really good. You have to excuse my voice a little bit. I came down with tonsillitis yesterday, um, which was great timing. Um, but I've taken the kind of cold and flu today and I always sound worse when I'm starting to feel better for some reason. I have no idea why, but 
I'm not going to let that uh, stop me from drawing. Um, it always makes you feel better, no matter how you feel, doesn't it? Right, I think what we might do is start cracking on, if there's no questions from yesterday, with the fur. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about actually was blending, which a lot of people find a bit tricky, the graininess of the paper. Now it does depend on what paper you're using. If it's really textured, which is what I used to begin with, let me see if I can show you close up. This was the first drawing I ever did. Let me see if I can show you close up the texture. Can you see how bumpy that is, how the light's kind of coming through? Um, it's watercolour paper. I think it's got a big stain on the back. Um, watercolour paper and it absorbs everything. Really tricky to use um, and so I did find the graininess a little bit of an issue. That's why I love the De La Rainey Smooth. It's still got texture and it holds the layers but it, it, it's easier to get rid of the graininess. You might hear a lot of artists talking about the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper, a bit of a mouthful. I bought it in massive sheets couple of years ago and I've gradually been working my way through it and when I first used it I absolutely hated it it's like a linen-y texture it's like lines so it almost looks like you're crisscrossing then um, one side's more liney one side's a little bit more uh, a little bit smoother um, then I got used to it and I absolutely loved it you never ran out of layers so for commission work if you're doing pet portraits it's brilliant uh, because you can just keep adding and adding and adding but the last time I used it again I struggled with the graininess and I just wonder if my techniques have slightly changed um, and I just needed to work a little bit harder on it I don't know if any of you have found that some of my members have recently told me about some different papers that I'm going to start trying Stonehenge is one of them um, I've heard that that's really great um, for kind of smooth texture. Um, I'm having a few messages pop up. If I can't um, answer them live, I'm afraid, because I'll completely lose my <laughs> don't want to do that. Um, so hopefully people are finding me uh, just live in the group. Sometimes you need to keep refreshing for me to pop up. But hopefully most people have found me now. Um, it's not always straightforward and if you're not used to Facebook and not used to kind of people going live it can be quite confusing but fingers crossed right um, if you're hopping on which a couple of people are please do say hello it's always lovely to to get to know you a little bit um, and we are going to fly buzzing around we are going to start with our fur now if that's okay with you has everyone got their, are people drawing along with me or are you going to be watching for today and then going away and having a little practice? I hope you do. I really hope you do. Although sometimes, you know, I've watched these workshops before on all different subjects, not just drawing. And sometimes it's just nice to have um, a little bit of something in the background. Uh, so, yeah, do let me know. I'm going to keep the comments just there. And hopefully they will be up to date. And then I'm going to switch the camera around. You're watching, Marilyn. <laughs> are you going to have a go later or are you going to dive into something in the membership? There's lots of tutorials there um, waiting. I'm just going to turn the camera around. And there's our dog from yesterday. I'm just going to move forward a little bit and down. You're drawing along, Karen. Oh, it's nice to have company. Right, can everyone see? Is that clear? You're going to draw later, Marilyn. Oh, good for you. A little bit delayed on my computer, so I'm just going to wait for the camera to switch around so that I can see. Have a little sip of water. And we're going to get going. Got a few more things to show you as well um, in terms of blending and I think we might have a little play with those today. So when it comes to fur, black fur, it's got to be one of my favourites to draw. We've got a shiny area here, we've got like a gingery area there and then we've got some really dark fur. So it's lovely to just think about how we're going to build up the layers and create that depth. So if you imagine fur just like you know the hair on your head or if you've got a pet that you can <laughs> stroke and, and feel there's obviously lots and lots of layers of fur there's not just one 
I've actually lost my glasses, which isn't great. Where have I put them? I do need them, really. Otherwise, this is going to be a lot trickier. Here they are. They're always not far away. Right. Here we go. Just going to move to the comments. Right. So what I tend to do is to try and get a base layer down. And what I look at is the lightest colour that I can see in the reference photo. And for this dog, because it's nice and shiny and it's black, I'm seeing cold grey. Cold grey one, possibly cold grey two. Don't think you can go far wrong if you just use the cold greys. My pencil has snapped in my pencil sharpener. Isn't that just typical? I need to get a nice sharp point. Well, actually, not so much because I'm going to be doing a base layer, but I do need a little bit of a point. I'm using my m and r and for some reason it's having a funny five minutes yeah the lid's gonna snap i have to go and get another one so starting here look at that that's gonna snap off let me go and get another one Always got one spare. Um, good morning, Lisa. How are you doing this sunny morning? It's nice to have a little bit of sun. Oh, that's better. Look at that. Look at the sharp point on that. See, that's why this pencil sharpener is amazing. That's always so sad when a lead comes out. So what I'm going to do is these lines that I've drawn in are a little bit darker than I'd want them to be. I've done that so that they show up on camera, but I'm just going to lift them up with the kneadable. This is another really good way of using it. You just pat it like this. You can rub it as well. Just be careful if you're using slightly thinner paper, you might end up creasing it a little bit, which you don't want. And I've definitely done that with drafting film in the past, and that's really... Um, horrible if you've got a horrible crease all the way down the middle so I've lifted up around the eye a little bit and now we're going to get a base layer in and I tend to use either a back and forth kind of scribbly motion really light hand again if you're naturally heavy-handed move your hand further away from the end of the pencil and what I'm doing is just putting this cold gray one in the area that I can see one, the lightest part with the shine of the fur and also starting to get rid of the graininess in the darker areas of the fur. Now, this part here is kind of orangey, although there's lots of different colours within. So I think there's a few reasons for getting this base layer down. First of all, you're not committing yourself to too much. It's not going to be that difficult to lift this back up. So if you do make a mistake, it's not really a big deal. Secondly, you're starting to fill up the tooth of the paper, starting to get rid of the graininess. And also, I don't know about you, but if you're starting a new piece, sometimes it's difficult to know where to begin. And so I think putting pencil to paper is always going to be... Um, it just kind of gets over that first initial fear of putting the pencil down. Now I'm going to start to layer up. So I'm moving into cold grey too. The Fabrica style polychromos are great because obviously they kind of lead you <laughs> nicely into the next one. So I'm starting to use the fur technique. Now the fur technique, if you've not really seen this before, is that you're thinking about the length of the fur that you're drawing. So in this case, it's relatively short. Around the ears is a lot longer. So it sounds simple, but the length of your pencil stroke is dependent on the length of the fur. If you're going to do very short pencil strokes, tiny short, that's more like a horse hair. If you're going to do slightly longer pencil strokes, then that's going to determine how long the fur looks. If you make the pencil strokes too long, then you might end up with a, a shaggier looking dog than you want it to be. Um, so it sounds quite kind of straightforward, but actually it's so easy to 
make them a little bit too long. The other thing is that you're using a light hand and you're going over the same area a few times. So if you want to add more pigment, if you want to darken it up, don't press harder, just go over the same area a few times with that pencil stroke. And this is why it's so mindful. This is why it's a really lovely, relaxing hobby because actually it's quite repetitive, especially dark fur because you're ending up building up through the greys and it's it's just really kind of repetitive and relaxing in a way quite therapeutic so you can see I'm really not pressing hard I'm just thinking about the direction of the fur as well that's really important because we don't want the fur to go horizontal on the dog, that's really going to show up. And around the eye is actually quite a difficult place to be because the fur changes direction like a clock, okay? It goes round the eye, so it changes direction as you go round, it starts to come round here. And then as the nose comes in, it changes direction again. So that's really quite tricky. So just be a little bit mindful of that because otherwise it's going to look a little bit too, the texture will be wrong or it look a bit woolly or shaggy. So that's the cold grey two. I'm going to work up to the cold grey three. And I'm going to look at where the darkest parts are. Now this part here is really dark. So I know that I can add the darker colours and we can start building our way up. When I come down to the nose, I just want to change direction. And I'm just mapping in a little bit like we did with the eye when there are certain details within the um, eye that we want to leave free. I'm mapping in so that I know if I leave this drawing and come back to it, I know what I was kind of doing as I left. So that I can start up again quite easily. I'm leaving this kind of gingery section free and then I'm just working up using a light hand and I'm kind of using a flicky motion so you start a little bit firmer on the pencil and then as you get towards the end of the fur which tends to be a little bit finer then you lift the pencil so the pressure changes throughout the pencil stroke so I'm going to be adding a few layers to the darkest part here going over and over making sure that you're not creating really straight lines, which is an <laughs> another thing that, you know, if, if I wanted to create a straight line, I wouldn't be able to do it. It would be really tough. But when I'm trying to be random, straight lines seem to appear out of nowhere. Does anyone else get that? It's quite frustrating. So if you are doing a straight line like I am here, just adding a few longer ones in, just to break it up a little bit, because otherwise it can look a bit like it's had a haircut recently, look a little bit too groomed and a little bit unrealistic. So I'm just gonna go up into the shine here. And actually, I'm gonna come into the nose. I've put a little bit here, and I'm thinking about the direction of the fur again. So at this point, it's kind of going upwards at an angle and it's changing direction towards the eye and then towards the other eye. So you can see how you really need to think about the direction of the fur and the length of the fur. In the middle of the eyes, there tends to be a place where they meet. So you're coming in from this side and then on this side, you're coming in from the left. So there's gonna be a point in the middle where they meet so that has to be quite a smooth transition it would be quite easy to be able to have a line going up which you kind of don't really want you want it to be a smooth transition between the sides of the hair so using lighter pencils like this cold gray we are now three it it doesn't kind of create a really really dark line So coming up, so you can see why coloured pencils are notoriously slow, that's kind of what I love about them, they make me slow down. I'm just working into that shiny part which it's got a lot of cold grey in, 
it's also got um, darker colours as well. Um, coming down into the eye, following the direction, and then over here it's actually quite black. But in order to get that really rich black colour, we want to layer up through the greys first of all and not go straight in with the black because it can be quite flat and it does smudge. So the black is usually the last colour that I put down. I'm just being mindful to leave that little gap there between the eye and where the fur starts. We've got that water line. So all of these little details are going to add up to the final piece looking more realistic. So I'm adding a few more layers just as fur grows. It's got lots and lots of layers that make up a coat. And I'm just following the reference photo. I'm kind of looking at that all of the time. And all down here is really dark. So I'm just rotating my pencil a little bit as well. So you kind of stay on the sweet spot. Obviously, it's going to be wearing away a little bit. But if you rotate the pencil, then you end up getting to that pointy bit as well. Now, at this point, it's really natural to want to start rushing it. Please don't do that, because I think what happens then is that you're not adding enough layers in which then starts to, um, the graininess of the paper then starts to become a bit of an issue. I've moved on to cold grey four now, and I'm starting to add this into all of the areas that I can see this colour. If you're a little bit unsure, then I'd go into the darkest areas and just add a little bit in there. So I'm just thinking about the direction. I'm using a light hand and I'm following that ginger eyebrow around thinking about how the fur changes direction down here. It kind of starts vertically and then it goes off to, on a diagonal up towards the middle of the head. And we're starting to, to darken up now. We're starting to notice that it's getting a little bit darker. Now towards the right of this ginger eyebrow, there's a little dark part. I'm going to add that in before we get to the shine. So all of these things, same as by the eye, there's quite a dark section that we started yesterday. And I'm just again being mindful of where my, the direction of the pencil. Now, even within a shine, so you'll notice even within the shine here, there are some darker areas, some darker pencil, well, darker hairs. So we're going to put those in as well, because otherwise what you're going to end up with is like a stripe. And that's not going to look very natural. So keep going over the same areas a few times, building up these shapes. This area here is really quite dark, so we're going to go over quite a few times. We're just blowing away any fallout. So you can see why it takes a little while to build up these layers. I'm just going to come up a little bit from the bottom because this grey eyebrow isn't pointy from the corner of the eye. It kind of starts here. And then just mapping these parts. Just be a little bit mindful of where you're putting the pencil here. Up here I can be a little bit quicker. But down here I don't want to put some lines in the wrong place. Because it's going to be difficult to work out which direction the fur needs to go in then. So adding a little bit more darkness towards where the eye is. And then through the centre is quite light. How's everyone getting on so far? Is this making sense? Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And what we're going to be doing is building up through the layers and then I want to show you the slice tool. 
and you know I might try and put a little bit too much in one area so that you can show how lifting it up is really quite oh, um, good with the kneadable eraser and the Tombow as well. So I'm just following uh, where the darkest parts are. I'm just looking at the reference photo, pulling back. So this part up here, and you see these two lines, this is where the dark part really shows again. So I'm just going to map that in so that I know that this part next to it is a shine. Sometimes you need to go a little bit darker in certain areas before you can see how dark to go. So rotating the pencil again, still using a light hand. I'm not pressing any harder at all so that we can gradually build up through the layers. Can you see it's starting to take shape? You're starting to see that this is darker. It's darker here. And then there's a nice stripe in there. So that area again, just thinking about straight lines. We don't really want straight lines. We want the odd little bit sticking out here and there, which is a lot more natural. How's the graininess of yours looking? Because a lot of people tend to fight that. Um, but like I said, it does make a difference what paper you're using. Keeping going with this cold grey. We on four. Adding a little bit more here. If you're noticing that it is really grainy, then what I tend to like to do is go back in with a lighter colour and I just kind of glaze over the top, really, really light hand, big circles. And what that does is it starts to spread the pigment a little bit and it also softens the pencil stroke. So if it's really grainy and really liney, it tends to pull everything together. Can you see how that's probably a little bit too detailed? But in real life, you can see how this then creates really soft, dense looking fur just by going over the top using the side of the pencil, not straight down, and just glazing over the top with the lightest colour. So you can either use a light, the lightest colour that you can see, possibly the one that you've used for your base layer, or Karen Dash have got this really good pencil blender. It's colourless. They used to be made out of um, the inner section, and it was like a, a weird kind of hexagonal shape and they tended to snap a little bit when you were using them so it looks like they've obviously changed the design for the better and now you just sharpen it like a normal pencil and then you can use it in the same way that I just did with the lighter pencil and this just tends to get rid of the graininess a little bit without putting any colour down. So if you're a little bit worried about which colour to use as a blender, I would really recommend getting one of these colourless pencil blender from Karen Dash. They are fantastic. The other thing that you can use um, is a solvent to blend. Um, a lot of people like to use this. There's quite a few advantages to it. Um, the one I quite like there's a few on the market I'm not sure if you can get this is called zest it I'm not sure if you can get this abroad as easily but it's for used in wax pencils and oil pastels and things like that and what it does is it breaks down the binders within the pencil and it spreads it out you need a paintbrush for this and then you just kind of paint it on like you would paint water on top of watercolor pencils it really brings out the pigment, which is lovely. So if you're drawing something really vibrant, um, like a macaw or something like that, it really makes it look quite painterly. It's fun to use because you can get your paintbrush out. It obviously get, makes the pigment bright, like I said, and it gets rid of any graininess brilliantly. A couple of things to watch with it is that you do need quite a few layers in order for it to work if you haven't got enough layers down so in a way some people would think well what's the point of it then because you're having to put the layers down anyway you might as well just carry on with your pencils and that's ten that's what I tend to do in general um, but you can probably get away with a few less layers but you do need enough 
pencil down in order for it to actually spread it out. The other thing I would watch is putting too much on. So I would recommend having a little tissue that you can blot any excess onto before you put it onto your paper. Otherwise, you'll end up with like an oily residue and it will be too wet. And it also might even go into little globules which would be awful. That's happened to me in the past when <laughs> I definitely put too much on. So that's something to watch, but it's inexpensive and it is a lot of fun. And if you want to speed up the process a little bit, then solvents are your thing. Um, sometimes they're called OMS, odorless mineral spirits. But I think the zest is good because it's not strong smelling. It's not meant to smell of anything apart from kind of tangerines or mandarins or something i'm moving on to the cold gray five and i'm going to darken up even more so i hopefully want you to see how by building up through the layers nice and slowly and gently we get a really nice rich black and it was quite nice to put this one in so that you could see the difference and see how it gradually starts to build up so this is a really nice sharp pencil again. As we go up through the layers, it's quite important to keep your pencils sharp um, because you'll just end up with fat pencil lines and then it will look a little bit too uh, crayony, if that makes sense, a little bit too grainy. Coming down here, there's some darker lines in here. Again, just mapping that in and then coming up into this section as well. Adding a little bit to here. As we go up through the layers and the pencils get a little bit darker, you, you'll need to use less and less of them because there are some lighter parts. And what I like to do is if there's a shine like this, I like to keep that free of all of the other colors until I've got it as dark as it needs to be. And then I can start adding the detail in the middle and kind of breaking it up again. So changing the position of my hand a little bit, following the direction of the fur, making sure that I'm not doing straight lines. Why is it so easy to do straight lines when you don't want them? Leaving that little bit of uh, lightness above the eye. And there's quite a lot of detail going on down here that needs to come in with this cold gray five just to darken up. And again, we'll be able to see how dark we need to go. So I'm just going over the top, not pressing any harder. A little bit more pressure when you put pencil to paper and then you're lifting back up again. It's starting to look like it's getting darker. How are yours looking? I can't see the comments anymore. How are you getting on? Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll just keep going, keep building up. So now we've worked up into cold grey five. Obviously, cold grey six is coming next. We're running out of cold greys. In general, the reason I kind of choose cold greys over warm greys, I do use a combination of both usually in most drawings. But if the overall kind of look of, the, I always look in the shine, if the look of the shine is kind of blue, I'll use the cold greys, which have more of a bluey undertone. And if it's a little bit browner, I'll use the cold greys, but they do work beautifully together. So you can use a combination of all of them. Um, there's some longer hairs coming out, so light over dark. A lot of people talk about the, the light over dark problems with coloured pencils. One way to overcome that is to use something like pastel matte paper because you are then able to put light over dark much more easily. But, you know, that brings its own issues as well. It takes a little bit of getting used to. It's very, very different texture it's um it's not like sandpaper but it's it's like it's fibrous i think it's sprayed on it's very 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 different i'm just going to add a little bit more to this section because i want that shine to show through 
So I'm using longer pencil strokes because this is a base layer really. So I could use circles if I wanted to. I just want to add a little bit more pencil here because there's an interesting part up here that's really going to start bringing it to life. So really it's just about enjoying the process of it, really enjoying not trying to hurry it, not trying to think, well, gosh, I need to get this bit done and I'll just press a bit harder and I'll rush. I always find if I slow down and really take my time and just be in the moment, be in the present and just thinking about your pencil touching the paper, the way it feels, the way it smells. I love the smell of the pencils, the way the sharpening smell. It sounds a little bit strange and a little bit woo, but I think being present in the moment and, and not worrying about, you know, what you have to do for the rest of the day or what you're going to cook for dinner or um, anything else, anything big that's troubling you. I think if you can get lost in the moment for just a little bit of time, even if it's just for 10 minutes a day, it just gives your brain that chance to slow down. And it gives it a little bit of space to be able to just quiet down those loud voices or inner chatter. Um, and it, it just gives you a little bit of peace. And, and it's amazing. The brain is such an amazing thing. If we've got space and if we're not in our panic or anxiety mode, if we're in a much more relaxed state, kind of living in our subconscious a little bit more rather than consciously trying to work everything out, our brain is then able to come up with solutions and it will always come up with the right answer based on the situation. So having that space for your brain to be able to work things out. Have you ever found that? Have you ever found when you've gone for a walk or you've had a bath or you've done something just kind of mindful, you'll, you come up with an answer to something, you come up with a solution or you come up with a great idea um, and that tends to be how it works really just giving yourself a little bit of time and space and that's why I just love drawing so much it makes me slow down I'm such a fast-paced person I do everything too fast and I end up feeling a bit manic we're moving up to cold gray six now and so just thinking about putting pencil to paper really calms my mind down just love it. Does anyone else find the same? So I'm just building up through the darkest parts now and just adding a little bit here. There are some light areas within this section so I don't want to put too much darkness in and I'm just thinking about the direction of the fur nearest the eye. Now I'm leaving this quite blank but it does need to have a little bit of pigment in it at some point. Just be careful of your um, areas where they meet that kind of transition stage because you might find that you start one area and then they don't quite meet so you haven't quite finished that transition so just thinking about that a little bit tidying up sections because if sections are looking a little bit uh, messy or there's gaps it tends to draw your eye and sometimes you think, well, I don't know what's gone wrong, but it just doesn't it doesn't look right for whatever reason. And it's difficult to work it out. So just making sure that you're tidying up some areas can make all the difference to the final piece. So just leaving those gaps. I'm noticing that my pencil is really showing through so you can go back in with your light pencil and just gently glaze over the top and it just gives it such a soft look, a soft fluffy look. That's another layer you're adding. How many layers have we put in now? So we've got, we've worked our way up through the cold greys. So that's definitely six, but then we've also added a few layers on top with the same colours. So we're probably up to 10, 11 maybe. So this is why things take time. If you're doing a pet portrait and you say to someone, oh, it takes 20 hours, this is why. Because you're drawing every piece of fur 
10, 15, 20 times. So you can see how it's starting to build up now. I'm going to keep going um, with the layering with the cold grey six. And I'm going to add a few more layers. I'm just going to go into the darkest parts now. That really dark section next to the ginger part. I'm darkening that up. Because it's coming to the point where we don't know how light to go. So colour is kind of relative to what's around it. And tone is relative. So until we've got other areas in, we can't really see how dark we need to go. I've noticed here now that I've made a little bit of a mistake. So that's a good opportunity for me to show you how the Tombow works. Um, make sure you keep your end clean. I tend to bite it off. Again, I don't know if that's the best thing to recommend. Um, you can rub it on something a little bit um, textured just to get rid of any dirt. But what we don't want is a dirty end to then rub onto our work. So here at the top of the eyebrow, I've put a little bit too much dark in. And look how that just lifts it back up again. You can use your Tombow like you use a pencil. So you can actually almost draw lighter hairs with it. And I just think it's... I just couldn't live without this piece of kit. It's amazing. That looks much better. I'd also recommend a fluffy brush and just, just brushing off your fallout. Um, don't do, uh, don't use this fluffy brush on pastel mats. This is a really cheap makeup brush that I just got on Amazon. I think it was like two quid. But it's really great for brushing away any fallout. Totally agree. Getting lost in the art, art and exercise, the best kinds of meditation for me every day. Definitely, Harry. I completely agree. Um, you know, they've definitely said that um, drawing and exercise are forms of meditation. And I love meditation on its own as well. Again, causes me to slow down. I tend to, everything speeds up and I want to just calm everything a little bit. So I do a little bit of everything. Um, I teach Pilates, which is lovely. Started that back up again, now we are allowed. Um, I meditate, I use my hypnotherapy, and my drawing is obviously something I just love. I'm moving up to, oh, I've just snapped the end off, Payne's Grey now. Payne's Grey is a really nice um, next step for the cold greys because again it's got that kind of bluish undertone i don't want to go into the area that i've just lifted up so i'm just going to put a few little dashes and then again using this pencil to just darken up even more so coming down and then thinking about the direction of the fur Thinking about some little flyaways, which are really important. There's going to be some dark hairs within the light. I've noticed that as I think about going darker and I think about putting dark hairs into lighter areas, it just pulls it all together a little bit, which it didn't do before. It just looked a little bit stripy. So using my paints grey, again, I'm not pressing any harder, possibly just a little bit. But I know we're getting to the point now where I don't have to worry about the layers. I'm going to come out with the Payne's Grey a little bit more into the lighter area. So again, really important that we don't have straight lines. We want all of these random hairs. They're just as important as getting the shape right. In fact, they're probably more important to get these flyaways so it doesn't look too groomed you tend to find that any flaws that something have if that's how you see it as flaws is actually you know the best thing that you can put in all of these little details so I'm just you can see I've just changed the shape of that a little bit now and it's starting to stand out a lot more just be careful how you lay those flyaways down because you are generally putting them over the top of light, so they're going to show up a lot more. So possibly going a little bit slower with those flyaways. Um, 
there's not much of the darker hair within this section. So again, you can see I'm really slowing down into the lighter parts because I don't want to put too much pencil in. It'd be so easy to go too dark in this bit. So I'm being a bit more mindful about where I'm putting the pencil. I want some little hairs to come up into the ginger bit. And then I can think about how the two sections come together. This is quite dark here. So I can be a little bit quicker with my pencil now with my Payne's Grey and add more darkness. Um, and again, thinking about the light hairs that go into dark, we don't want lovely straight lines. We want random lines. We want some hairs that look longer than others, some hairs that are lighter that go into the dark. If you're struggling with this kind of transition where it's from a shine into a dark section and your lines are looking a little bit too unrealistic or a little bit too samey or uniform then that's another way another time another chance to use your Tombow Mono. I'm just going to put some in put this dark in and then I want to show you how it will show up the light hairs over dark and then we're also going to use the slice tool as well I want to show you that so I'm just coming up here. I'm not quite sure how much we're going to be able to get done today. So just adding more and more, just looking at the shape of that shine, just adding a little bit do more darkness so I can then lift it back up again. So it comes in a little bit more here. There's some darker parts there and that's going to make the little eyelash section stand out. I want to darken that up, adding a few more layers of the Payne's Grey. And then I'm going to do the same under the eye as well. So can you see why it takes so long? Can you see why the layers are so important? If I pressed really hard and I just went straight in with the darker colours, you would get a much more kind of crayony look. You wouldn't get the soft fur. Um, and that's why I, I tend to go over the top with the lighter colour again, just to soften everything. Um, especially on that transition line. The light and the dark, just softening the pencil strokes. And you'll find that a little bit of the dark pencil will come off onto the light end. And then you can spread it out, which is really nice. Um, you can see it's starting to build up now. So I wanted to show you the Tombow. So if you're struggling with these flyaways and the light into the dark, the Tombow is great for that. You can see how it just go over it a few times and it will just lift up the pencil and you can do light hairs over the top of dark. So that's really good. The slice tool works better if you've got lots and lots of layers. We've got to a point now, once you get to your Payne's Grey, there's not much else, <laughs> there's not much further to go apart from the black. So we're going to start on the black now. And you're really going to see the difference when you add the black in and the fact that, you know, it's probably not a good idea to go straight in with the black because you, um, it's much more difficult to lift it back up again. So again, light hand, I'm just going into the darkest parts of this dog and I'm not going right to the edges where I've put all of the Payne's Grey because I do want there to be some darker um, sections that aren't completely black I just want the middle section to be really black so again we've got a transition between the shine and the rest of the fur because this fur is all black you know even these shines are black it's just the way that the light is bleaching out so that's what we want it to look like we don't want it to look like a stripy dog um, which is quite easy to do so again I'm rotating my pencil I'm using a light hand and I'm going over it a few times coming out into the lighter parts 
coming down into these sections. Can you see how dark that makes it look now? I just want to zoom in a little bit. So you can really see how it's starting to come together and it's starting to look like black fur. Morning, Jennifer. Oh, hospital appointment for hubby. Oh, I hope that goes well. Yeah, please do uh, comment if you're watching on the replay, just like you would be in real life. I do love reading the comments. I know it's not always easy to make these live sessions. So I'm just adding a little bit of darkness around the top of the eye. We really want this part to stand out. And there's a line next to that top eyelid, which is really dark. So I'm going to go over it a few times, darken it up. And then a few little dark black lines into this part, even though it gets broken up a little bit with the ginger part of the eyebrow. Coming down here is quite dark. Again, just being really mindful about where, where you're putting your pencil now because the black will show up. It's not easy to lift. It will lift up to a point, but it's not as easy. You'll also notice that the black, you can see the lines a lot more. Um, and if that is the case and you don't really like how it's looking, don't forget you can go over the top with your light pencil again and just soften those pencil strokes. It will knock the colour back a little bit, but then you can keep adding. And what you're doing is then adding the layers and getting a lovely soft look. Black up here as well. Just every now and again, taking a step back, looking to see how it looks. Sometimes if you're looking at a piece too much, it can look really weird and really off. So just take a step back or even come back with fresh eyes a little bit later on. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised because a lot of the time it's a lot better than you think. So just darkening up this part up here a little bit. So going over the same area a few times, not pressing any harder. And then making sure that we're looking at your reference photo. And you're not just, it would be very easy to put just black in this section. Um, but there's lots of different levels of darkness. It's in shadow, but it's not completely black. So just be a little bit, um, you know, just look at your reference photo. Um, it's quite tempting to just go in and put the same colour over everything. But... The more you look, the more you notice. And we're just going to darken up this part of the eye. And there's quite a nice shadow that comes down there. It's like a triangle section. And by adding all of these details in, you're going to end up with a rounded look of the face. Obviously, you want the face to look like it's coming around as well. You don't want it to look like it's flat. So by just putting these little details in, it's going to make it look much more rounded. Just making sure that the eye is the right shape. And these little kind of eyebrow, little kind of eyelid are the right shape. That black goes into that part a little bit more deeply. And then we're going to be adding a little bit more here. So you can see how that shine is really quite light now. We need to add a little bit of a mid-tone in here just to pull it all together. So you can go back in with your cold grey four or five. I think I'll go with the four first of all. And then we can see um, it kind of come together. So just don't leave that shine looking completely like a shiny stripe. There are some 
dark hairs within the lighter sections and you tend to find towards the edge of the darkest parts there's these lovely mid-tones which are going to pull that shine together. So adding these in are going to really bring it together. I'm not going to make it stand out as much. We can glaze over the top by using small circles just to darken an area quickly. Um, I'm actually going to go in with a warm grey three into this section because that's certainly not white um, and nor is this section here. I'm just going to darken that up a little bit. I'm going to go in, my screen's turned off, I'm going to go into the ginger part because again it's difficult to tell how dark to go until you've got other sections in. So I'm going in with a cream which is quite yellowy as a base colour. Um, there are areas that are darker within, but I think this is going to just pull it together. Make sure that you overlap the edges a little bit, so some lighter hairs go into the black. And then I've got my um, burnt ochre, and I'm going to add a little bit of that. Not all over in the same amount of pencil strokes, we want it to look a little bit different. I want it to look like there's depth within this section as well and it tends to get a little bit darker down at the bottom. And there's little bits of this kind of ginger that show through. There's a little bit at the top. Just going over the same areas a couple of times and then I've got a terracotta which is a really lovely orangey colour and I'm going to add that to the top section. A few little hairs within the lighter section as well just to add that in and then once we've got this ginger in I'm just going to go over the top with a few ginger hairs within the light section. Once we've got the ginger in we can go in with some dark colours within the ginger section just to pull the edges in and make it kind of stand out a little bit. So you can see how that's starting to come together now. We're going to add a little bit of the darker colour using the cold grey 5 into this ginger part. We couldn't do that until we added the colour in underneath and then a few of the hairs that kind of come in at the top we might need to darken up a little bit coming up around there there's a shadow part up here and then down here we might need a little bit of more darker color we can go in with the Payne's gray at the bottom and just darken up this bit just like we've done over here and at the top as well just want to balance this section a little bit because it's looking a little bit too white so I'm using the cold grey one just to soften the pencil and then I'm going to go in with a darker colour, I'm going to go in with the cold grey four and start to just pull the edges together, they need to be a little bit darker so using these mid-tones. Remember even within the shadow, even within the shine sorry, there are some darker hairs getting the direction of the fur right, so it's kind of going off to the left this side and then off to the right this side and then they join in the middle without too much of a line, so just overlapping. We want to put some darker hairs within this lighter section, not too many, but we definitely need them in there to start pulling it in. Don't be... Um, afraid to probably go darker than you think. You can always pull up little odd hairs with the Tombow but generally it gives it much more life. If you want to go a little bit darker in certain areas, there's like a little stripe there, then just going over it a couple more times, not pressing any harder and just getting that pigment in. Going over the light sections too just to pull it all in. You see how that's brought that shine in now. A little bit darker on this side as it tends to be uneven. Again, that's another thing to look out for. Coming down here, 
that's a bit darker and you can see the first strokes a little bit more as you go down the nose because they're all in shine so just thinking about the direction of your pencil a little bit more and if you want to break it up and just soften go over the top with your lighter pencil and that just tends to pull it all in together softens those pencil strokes spreads them out a little bit and you can see how that's starting to bring it all together now we want to do the same up here making sure there's enough darkness in the section next to the shine. There's some dark that goes up here. And there's some darker hairs within the shine, so going over the top with a kind of mid-tone. This is the cold grey five, and it just pulls it in together. Another little trick with shiny fur is to think about putting other colours in. You can put pinks in, reds in. When it comes to black, I tend to put a little bit of blue in. Even if I can't necessarily see it, I'll just be very, very careful and just add it to the edge of the shine, going over the top of the dark just a little bit. And what that tends to do is it just makes it pop a little bit. Look, I've hardly put any in, but you can see in real life, if you put too much in, you can always go back over the top with your lighter colour just to blend it in a little bit. But it just makes it stand out a little bit more and makes it look nice and shiny. Can you see? I've hardly put any in, but I've just put it around the edges here and a little bit here. You can do the same with different coats if you add like a pinky colour. Um, sometimes if you add like a green to a, an orangey shadow, it just makes the drawing pop out a little bit. Um, another thing you can use, we said we we're going to use the slice tool, is that once you've got a few layers in, you might need a few more than this, but you can then scrape them back. Make sure you're using the side, not going straight down like that. You're using the side and you're just pulling up some of the hairs. So you can pull up, let me get closer. So you can pull up some light over dark. Can you see how that's just lifting the pigment a little bit? Can you see that? So it's really great for flyaways and it's a fantastic um, tool to use at the end. You know, I've got an eyebrow here. I can add that into the dark and I can pull a really long light hair out um, to make it less uniformed. I'm going a bit closer again into the black. Can you see how it just lifts it up? So again, you're using it like a pencil in a way. You're using it to draw light hairs. It's great for around the muzzle. It's great for around the nose. Um, it's really fab for things like whiskers. You can sketch them in or scratch them in. And then you can go over the top with like a white pencil or something like that just to really make them stand out. So it's definitely been a game changer when it comes to coloured pencil work. Um, those light hairs over dark. I'll keep my throat kind of um, from drying out. How does that sound? Does that make sense? I hope it does. I'm putting my finger over the camera lens. How's that looking? So you can see how if you build up through the greys, you gradually end up with as dark as it needs to be. I probably need to go a little bit further out here. Um, I need to go a lot darker this side because that's in shadow and then down here as well. But we could keep going forever with this one, not forever. That's ridiculous. But you can keep tinkering for quite a long time. Um, How is everyone doing? Is anyone drawing along with me? Please do um, comment if you are. Uh, and don't forget to post yours in the group. Um, a little bit later on, I'm just going to turn the camera around again and look at me. <laughs> Hopefully you can see me. So how was that? How was it? Did that seem OK? Did it make sense? Um, it'd be lovely if you could um, let me know if any of these tips are a little bit different to what you've been doing or um, you think that they might help you in some way. Obviously, I'm a little bit restricted to what I can show you um, in a relatively short period of time. We go into more depth 
in the membership if it was something that you were looking into, joining a lovely community, um, drawing regularly with other people, um, having that little gentle accountability to keep up your regular creative practice, because I know it tends to slip with a lot of people. Um, it's a really lovely, warm, friendly community. We've got a private Facebook group that we interact in and we have regular interactive sessions on Thursday this week. Tomorrow, we've got our group hypnotherapy, which is always nice. We talk a little bit about techniques with negative thought patterns or um, anxiety, depression, stress, um, ways that we can help with that. And then we finish with a lovely meditation uh, just before bed, so that's at quarter past seven on Thursdays. Um, yeah, I just it's just such a lovely group. We've got a library of tutorials for you to choose from. Uh, I think there's like over 30 now in there that you can choose from. I've got a tree frog, a hedgehog. I use graphite, watercolour pencils, pastel pencils, the different types of paper. I'm obviously going to be trying different ones as well. That Stonehenge that I mentioned. Um, and you get the opportunity to vote on the next tutorial that I'm going to be doing. We're doing a gorgeous hedgehog at the moment that's almost finished, that's lying on its back and it's full of fur. And we're actually drawing on drafting film, which is really great to this slice tool works brilliantly on drafting film. And it's so much fun just scraping away and creating this beautiful texture. I just love it. So that's what we're working on at the moment. But the next one, I'm gonna to have to put in the group for a vote soon to see what you want to, to draw. If there's anything that you either have always wanted to try or that you think you might find a bit challenging, then that's a good opportunity to kind of get help and support with that because obviously I'll be drawing it and talking you through the process so that you can create your own pieces. Um, if you have any questions about the membership, then please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I'm always here to ask questions. Obviously, I'm available in the um, private members group as well, a little bit more for support and help if ever you need it on your own work. We also have an art clinic, which is great. It's just an opportunity to get together and have a chat, talk about all things art, any recommendations that people have. And I do realise that often people are working on their own piece and they might have commissions going on or they might have seen a reference photo that just spoke to them. Uh, I really get that because sometimes you just think, I need, I need to draw this, I need to have a go. Um, and so the art clinic is great because it's an opportunity to bring that piece and we can talk through anything that you're struggling with or anything that you just don't know how you're gonna tackle it. Sometimes, you know, thinking about it is really, really tricky. Um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh yeah, see you tomorrow night, Marilyn. Um, it, the group hypnotherapy, um, just a few bonuses that are available in the membership. 10% off the coloured pencil shop with the lovely Emma Kerridge um, within the Mindful Artist membership. So you get money off your pencils every order. And she does a lot of the accessories too, all of these things that I've talked about. And also you get money off private one-to-one -one hypnotherapy sessions um, because I see clients one-to-one -one as well during the week. So you get quite a big discount if you join the membership to one-to-one -one with me hypnotherapy solution focused hypnotherapy which is all about moving forward getting you unstuck out of certain patterns of behavior patterns of thought um if there's any issues or problems that you, that's kind of ongoing then we can move to shift that and move forward with that um i really hope you enjoyed today i hope it was helpful and i hope you start to see differences in your work uh, straight away please do comment in the comments and I will read them and hopefully answer them as well if you have any questions about the fur today or you can always ask them tomorrow when you've had a go at drawing your own fur understand people aren't going to be doing it necessarily with me sometimes it's good to watch and then watch back on the replay if you're watching on the replay please don't forget to say hello and ask questions as well um, it's been lovely to draw with people and feel like I'm kind of part of a uh, group art club in a way. It's always nice to, to be with people and not be drawing on your own um, all of the time. Uh, so yes, do let me know. I really look forward to tomorrow. We're going to kind of be pulling everything together 
and we're going to be diving into a dog's nose. This is an interesting one because it's actually out of focus, which you're going to find with some of your reference photos, especially if you're going to be doing commissions or pet portraits for people. It's not always going to be, uh, I think photos are one of the hardest things, especially if the pet has passed away and they're not able to take any more photos. You might have to piece together I think the most I've ever pieced together is like five or six reference photos to try and make one drawing. Um, so that will be a really good example of how to use these different things as well and different techniques, again, to build up uh, the look of a rounded rounded nose um, with all of the texture. I'm so glad you learnt a lot, Karen. Um, always lovely to see you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And um, I really look forward to seeing you at 10.30 tomorrow to carry on with our dog and to have a chat about all things colour pencil. I will leave the link for the membership in the description the, yeah, the description at the top. Click on the link. There's an information page which tells you a little bit more. But like I said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'd love for you to join our lovely group. Um, it's just fantastic. So. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Lots of love and bye for now.